Hey everyone, it's Mike Kramer here at Ma Capital back with another update for this week. Uh, so today we saw a pretty meaningful sell-off in the S&P 500 and in the NASDAQ 100 uh, with the NASDAQ falling by about 1.9% and the S&P 500 falling by about 1.6%. Uh, tonight we also had the first big wave of uh, earnings from the big tech. Microsoft reported results and Alphabet reported results. For full disclosure, I do have long positions uh, long-term long positions in both of those names. Um, and they are uh, both uh, moving higher after hours. Microsoft was moving higher by about 8% uh, at last check, trading up around 298. And Google was trading up about 1.5% uh, after hours. And so this is sort of changing the picture a little bit from where we closed. The first thing that's noticeable here is that you had a pretty big level of uh, support in the S&P 500 around this 4,080 level. I'm using that level because you can see it was the high here. It sort of marked the top here and uh, it came across. But really what you're noticing here also is that you have these bottoms in here. Uh, and so this 4070 to 4080 region, very important. To this point, we're, we're like on the border based on the close, very close to breaking that. If this level were to break, it would open the door up to potentially filling the gap all the way down to 39.75 because this region in here is very unstable in terms of the way it was very gappy. Uh, and so those types of patterns tend to be unstable and they tend to fill over time and they tend to do so pretty quickly once you start getting in that direction. But the uh, after hours trading is sort of changing the view just a little, but not by much. So what's important here is that also we had the S&P 500 futures uh, again, the the main level here was right around this 4100 region on the futures, and you can see that at least um, yes, today during the trading day we came down, we tested that level, it held, and now in the after hours we're rebounding a little bit, rising by about 45 basis points on the net, on the S and P 500 futures due to those strong results out of Microsoft, which are helping to lift the uh, the averages. A similar sort of picture here when we look at the, end, the NASDAQ futures. You can see what's important here and what's noteworthy is that at one point there was what was uh, a 2B top in the NASDAQ, uh, in the NASDAQ, in the NDX. And we had talked about this and notated it uh, a couple of weeks back when we had the uh, February 2nd high. And for a couple of days, the index tried to break out and break above this high uh, and but was unable to do it, creating a 2B top. And then finally, the index was able to do so, and then we consolidated right around this 13,250 region. And today we actually closed beneath that 2B top, and in, that would invalidate this, this breakout attempt, and really it makes it a false breakout. And in fact, we also fell right back down to the trend line that goes all the way back to March 20th, and that also held. And now after hours, because of Microsoft's results, the NASDAQ is trading up about 1.2%. And it's lifting it back above that level of uh, support uh, in the NASDAQ 100. So this is going to create uh, a little bit of a, of a of an issue, at least over the short term, until things kind of sort themselves out. If we just look at the, the NASDAQ on, on its own, and we just uh, assume that tomorrow's trading, uh, even if the market were to trade up, uh, that it is part of the equation that is being, that is this type of stuff. Uh, has already been priced in or the technicals are already making an assessment for that. What's going to be key to watch for is again, you know, where do we trade up to? We were down 1.9% today. This 12,880 region on the on the NDQ was clearly a pretty meaningful area of support and resistance at least on the wicks uh going back. So again, you're going to want to watch this 12,000 850 to 12,900 region on the queues, whether or not the index is able to break out above it or not, or if that continues to serve as resistance. If it serves as resistance, it probably tells us that the next move will be down in the NASDAQ. If we're able to break out above it, it could set up a retest of these highs. And on the NP SPX, it's really the same thing. You know, this 4080 area is going to be pretty critical, which at this point, it looks like there's a good shot that we're going to at least test it or get over it to start the day, um, depending on where things settle out during the European trading session and Asia hasn't even quite opened yet. So again, this is going to be the key level 
at least to watch over the short term as support and resistance to see how far we can get. Because again, if we're able to get back over that 4080 area, you know, there's not really much keeping the S&P 500 to at least getting back to 4100 and then potentially filling this gap up at 4140 or so. Again, so a lot of it's going to depend on what happens tomorrow once we open. So the Dow obviously uh, also has also so showed some weakness today you can see it came down to this 33,570 region sort of rolling over a little bit um again the dow is it's going to be important to keep an eye on this level right here because again this is where your really your support region is uh and and your resistance level right now is around 33,000 900 or so on the dow again if you if you see the dow break this 33,200 level it's going to set up much steeper declines for the Dow to come. And so basically at this point, uh, we're kind of in a murky spot until we can get some further direction out of uh, the markets tomorrow in terms of how they want to think about these results. When we look at the DAX, the DAX has also been of interest. And you can see that the DAX is uh, right now right back to this level of support at 12, uh, 15,950 or so. Again, this is really uh, a pretty amazing chart when you look at it from a lot of different perspectives. The most glaringly obvious thing today that you can see when you look at the DAX is that clear bearish divergence that continues to be the case uh, for the DAX. And that still is suggesting that this rally isn't likely to be you know, a long lasting event. And we're going to see this momentum eventually turn more bearish. But in the meantime, you know, this 15,900 level obviously is a big key because, uh, again, your next level after this is 16,300, and that's the all-time highs. Now, remember, there's a rotation going on here, mainly because European stocks are much less uh, expensive when you compare them to their U.S. peers, and, and it makes these stocks more advantageous to own. They're cheaper. Uh, they're, they're certainly cheaper than U.S. equities. And this is one reason why you're seeing the DAX continue to keep to remain afloat. The one thing to keep in mind, though, is that you are beginning to see weakness coming out of China. Obviously, uh, Germany uh, and the DAX have a lot of exposure to China, and you are seeing China begin to weaken. You can see that the China CSI 300 is at a pretty key level of support right now. And so I don't think it's really all that odd that you're seeing all of these major indices around the world coming to these major levels of support and resistance because again uh you know you get the dax that breaks out uh you have some upside but the dax breaks down and starts to roll over all of a sudden your downside somewhere around 15,100 so you need to continue to pay attention to these international markets as well australia 200 very important index to watch again high correlation with the um with the DAX over time. So this is something you're going to want to keep an eye on because again, you know, how much longer will, you know, Germany continue to outperform when you start seeing Australia, which is highly sensitive to and changes to the Chinese economy. If you start seeing Australia roll over, you got to wonder how much longer the DAX will continue to outperform because again, you know, Europe is a big trading partner with uh, China.